Years ago, there used to be on television a, a popular show about a Southern lawyer by the name of Matlock. Of course, the character that was Matlock was played by Andy Griffith, and, and many times you'd have these trials that would come forward, and he would ask questions, and ultimately there was always a twist or turn uh, that took you in a different direction. You thought you had it figured out at one point, only to find out that there was a different uh, line of questions that led to somewhere else. And, and Matlock always was able to find the answer, and he had asked the right questions to get there. Today we're going to talk in uh, 1 John chapter 4 uh, a little bit about something that we should do as Christians uh, when it comes to, to studying and looking at uh, people who may be preaching the gospel or sharing the gospel to verify that they are truly who they claim to be and that they do proclaim the one that uh, that is the true and living Son of God, which is Jesus Christ. So take your Bibles, turn with me to 1 John chapter 4 and we're going to start reading there uh, just a, set, a couple of verses about what we should be doing in regards to testing the Spirit of God in a person that is proclaiming to be a prophet of, of Christ. So 1 John chapter 4, we're going to begin reading with verse 1. It says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Let's pray together. Father, I pray tonight that as we study your word, that, God, you might uh, open our hearts up to you today, and, God, whatever it is that you might impress upon us to do, that, that God, we would be faithful in doing those things. God, I pray for our church that we might continue to serve you faithfully, and that, that God, we might just uh, join our hearts together in a sense of unity to worship you. God, we know that the devil during this time and age is, is active in trying to destroy the church and certainly has attempts in, in destroying the Christian. But God, in faith we seek you and in faith we claim you that you might see us through because God, you've told us already in scripture that even though that this, uh, even though the devil may be powerful in this world, greater is, uh, is he that is in me, which is you, Jesus. Greater are you than he that is in the world. And so we lay claim to that and we we ask you to guide us and protect us and to watch over us. God, we pray for the lost person that tonight might be the night that they ask Jesus Christ in their heart so that they too might receive your salvation and, and know that the person that's within them is greater than the person that is in the world. Bless us now, for it's in your name we pray, and amen. In verse 1, I find it interesting that that the Bible literally tells us don't believe everyone that comes out and claims to be a preacher or to be a prophet. Uh, that, and that is obvious to us because that's exactly how the devil would come towards us, is to claim that he has a message of faith and a message from God. But in the midst of that message, it would be skewed in such a way as to lead us not towards God, but away from God. Today, if if you are listening and you're looking to to, to find out whether or not uh, there, uh, that a preacher is valid or that he is, is truly a man of God, what you need to do is ask yourself this question. What is it that he preaches and how does it line up with the Word of God? In fact, the, this passage of Scripture tells us that if you're preaching anything but Jesus Christ crucified, that Jesus Christ is a man, of, uh, 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 a man who came to earth, uh, who is God-man, if they preach anything other than the fact that Jesus is the Messiah, that Jesus is the Son of God, that they are a false prophet. Uh, during this time of, of COVID, there have been a lot of people that have turned to, to different places for help. And maybe they've tuned in to video and, and they started watching people. And as they would watch, uh, somebody might say some things that would be encouraging and helpful and uplifting. And they would start following that person not realizing that the person that they were following was not of God at all because they didn't preach Jesus Christ crucified. They just preached a health and wealth and prosperity message or a feel-good message. 
And because it made them feel good, they would follow that. This day and age, we need to be active in trying the spirits, if you would, to test. Are the preachers of this generation, are the speakers of our churches, are the preachers of our churches truly preaching that Jesus Christ came to earth and died on a cross and, and died for my sins and through his power was resurrected that I too might have life in him. If we're preaching, and I use myself in that regards as a preacher, if we're preaching anything but that, then we are nothing shy of a false prophet. In fact, the Bible uses the word, the spirit of the Antichrist. If we're not preaching the message of Jesus, if we're not preaching that Jesus has come to, to forgive of sin and to save people, if we're not preaching that Jesus has come into the world that we might be overcomers through him, then we're not preaching the message that the people need to hear in this world and in this generation. And moreover, we are uh, preaching in the spirit of the Antichrist. I challenge preachers throughout the, the world today, pick up the mantle and begin to preach Jesus Christ crucified. There's never been a greater time than now for people to hear this, uh, the message of God, for it's now that people are being led astray, left and right, and one right after the other, being led astray from God. And so as preachers, we need to be bold in preaching that message, but also not just preachers. But as Christians, we should be bold in that message, the, the message that sin is real and that sin has a, a price to pay and, and that the price of that is death and hell and that there is salvation waiting in the gift of God uh, through Jesus Christ, that, not, uh, that we don't have to perish in our sins, but that we can be born again in Jesus Christ and that we can be forgiven. As we read this passage of scripture, I want to touch base real quick on verse 4 where it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. That literally is a, a message to every Christian that says that you are of God and that you are to proclaim that message that Jesus Christ has come into the world to seek and to save those who are lost. That's our message. That's what we share with others. That's what we teach and preach and share with our children is that we we should confess our sins to Christ and be saved through Jesus. And my challenge tonight is this, if you're listening and you've never asked Christ into your life, my, my challenge is, is that you might open your heart up even today and that you might ask God to forgive you of your sins and save you and that you might believe on Jesus Christ as your Savior. For the Christian, I want you to know that uh, while we are, are certainly uh, uh, in an environment where sin is rampant, we are greater than the sin that is around us, not because of who we are, but because who possesses us. You see, God is greater than those things that are around us. God is greater than the sin that exists in this world. And God is greater than the evil spirits of this world. So as a result, we are overcomers through Jesus Christ. And, and so my heart's prayer and uh, uh, my desire for each of you today is this, that you might lay claim to that and you might believe in that, that, it, that this salvation doesn't come uh, out of, uh, as far as having more, more money. You, you can't buy it. it. It doesn't come as being good or bad. You can't be good enough to get it. It's only a gift through Jesus Christ. And many times we hear the message that says, if you'll just be good, that that'll save you. Or if you just have a good mom and dad or a good grandma or grandpa, if you come from a good family, or if you just do good deeds, that that's enough to get to heaven. And the Bible is clear. None of that is sufficient. None of that is valid as far as getting you to heaven. The only way that you can get to heaven is simply by confessing your sins to Jesus and asking for forgiveness of sin. It's through Jesus Christ and Him alone that, that you're able to be saved. It is a gift from Him that, that only He can give. I, I, I hope and pray that tonight as, as we get ready to close out that if you're listening and you're lost, that you might take this moment to ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and save you. My heart's desire and prayers for the Christian that tonight might be the night that you commit yourself to telling each and every person, every man, woman, boy, or girl, about Jesus Christ, about what he has done, about the gift that he has, and about the opportunities of hope to every person that would receive him as their Savior. Would you join me this evening in prayer? Father, I pray tonight that it might be this night that people all throughout that are, might be listening into this video might come to you and receive you as their Savior. 
that God, they might confess their sins and seek you and, and, and ask you to come into their heart and save them. Father, my desire for the Christian is that tonight might be the night that, that we get serious about serving you and that we, we truly open our hearts up to you, that you might lead us to, to folks who are lost, that you might give us the words that we can say. God, we know that the message is clear and pure, and that is that, that Jesus Christ is the only way in which a person can be forgiven of their sins and be saved. So God, give us boldness to, to go into the world to share that message. Give our church the, the courage to, to be bold and faithful in, in serving you. God, may that always be the message that comes from the pulpit on Sundays and Wednesdays and, and whenever it is that we might meet, that God, the world might hear without a doubt that Jesus Christ is the hope for all people and, and is the hope for salvation of the world. Bless us now as only you can, for it's in your name we pray and amen. I would like to also invite you tonight that if you said that prayer, that you might reach out to us at Child's Memorial and, and share that with us. You can go to childsmemorial.com and there's contact information there. Also, if you don't have a home church, I'd like to invite you to come and be a part of, of Child's Memorial. We're meeting every Sunday morning. Uh, we're meeting at 10 o'clock for Sunday school and at 11 o'clock for church. And we would invite you to come and, and very shortly we hope to begin again our Wednesday night devotions and Bible study. That, that, that too will be an, another opportunity to come. But you be you be much in prayer about where God would have you to go and where God would have you to plug in and be a part of. And if it's at Child's Memorial, we invite you to come and, and join us uh, this Sunday for our worship. May God bless each and every one of you.